yeah, I'm going to talk about quantum non availability and authentication. And um, yeah, this is joint work with Gorin Allegat. And I want to start with a, with a classical motivation to, um, to uh, get an intuition what, uh, what, uh, what these security notions want to do. So we have this guy up here. Um, ah, it's this one. Um, and he wants to buy a new notebook. So what does he do? He sends a message to his bank to transfer some money to the, to the notebook store. But if this message is intercepted and some malicious adversary changes the contents of the message, then of course he will be very unhappy because he loses all his money. So what, uh, what kind of cryptography could, could prevent this? One answer is non-malleable encryption. So in this case, um, I want to give you a, a specific intu intuition about uh, non-malleable encryption that um, we will use la later to define the quantum notion. So now this guy encrypts the message instead of sending it in plain. And now non-malleability non will ensure that if this malicious adversary uh, changes the message, any such change will result in a random change at best of the message. And of course the, the bank will um, basically be confused and not transfer anything. Um, so with this in mind, I want to start uh, presenting our results and uh, I want to start out with giving a, a summary of our results so that you know what to expect. So um, we give a new definition of uh, information theoretic non-malleability for quantum symmetric key encryption. And this uh, definition um, fixes a vulnerability in, that was allowed by the previous definition. Also, um, it implies secrecy just like quantum authentication uh, implies the secrecy. Um, it can also be used as a primitive, like any non-malleable scheme, according to this definition, can be used as a primitive, primitive for building authentication schemes. And finally, uh, it has two equivalent, what's that? Uh, two equivalent uh, characterizations that um, one of them is uh, based on entropies and one of them is a simulation based uh, characterization and these make it easy to see that this definition both generalizes a classical definition and it um, improves the pre-existing quantum definition. In addition, we have another result uh, on authentication. Um, we show that the, the recent uh, definition for authentication with key recycling that will be the topic, one of the topics of the next talk can be fulfilled with unitary two designs. Okay, let's start uh, about non-malleability. Non so, um, classically non-malleability was first defined in the context of public key cryptography. Um, and it was defined in terms of a s simulation based security uh, using relations on the plain text. So basically, it was defi defined in a way such that uh, for any adversary that tries to produce a related plain text by modifying the ciphertext, um, there exists a, a simulator that doesn't even use the ciphertext. Later, it was realized that um, one can characterize uh, non malleability in, uh, as, a, as a certain kind of chosen plain text, a uh, chosen ciphertext security. Um, and this intuition was used by Hanaoka et al. to, um, to come up with an information theoretic definition of non-malleability in the symmetric key setting. So this, this works in the, as, as follows. If you, we have two plain text ciphertext pairs, xc and x tilde, c, c tilde, where the two ciphertexts are different, then basically even knowing one plaintext ciphertext pair doesn't tell me anything about the plaintext corresponding to a given different ciphertext. Okay, so um, yeah, later there was also uh, another defin uh, uh, definition given for information theoretic non reliability that's uh, more in the spirit of simulation-based security. Okay, so... Um, to, uh, to illustrate what, what are the challenges in uh, making a quantum uh, security definition of this kind, I want to describe to you what, what problems can arise. So um, this is the setup for classical non-malleability 
So we have some plain text X here that's encrypted into a ciphertext C. Then the adversary applies some attack that modifies the, possibly modifies the ciphertext, and then it is decrypted. So how do we check whether such a scheme here is secure? We uh, make copies of the, um, of the plain text and the two ciphertexts here, and now we can, for example, evaluate uh, a relation on the plain text and uh, the, on, on the two plain texts here, or we can calculate the conditional mutual information uh, that is used in the definition of Hanauke et al. Um, but none of this is possible in the quantum case because uh, because of the no cloning theorem that tells us that if X is a quantum message here, then we cannot make a copy of it, and if C is a quantum ciphertext, we cannot make a copy of it. So one has to come up with a, with a, yeah, with different uh, ideas how to, how to fix this. Okay, so let's see what, uh, what a quantum symmetric key encryption, uh, encryption scheme is. So um, we have a, a quantum symmetric key encryption scheme is given by a family of encryption and decryption maps indexed by a classical key. We assume the classical key to be uniformly random, cho chosen from some, some set. And these maps, um, yeah, the encryption map goes from a plain text space A to a ciphertext space C, and this is just a quantum channel, so that's, that's the, the quantum version of a stochastic map, basically. Also, we allow uh, the decryption map to reject. That's why uh, the decryption map goes to, like, this, to the slightly enlarged, um, plain text space that inc includes this reject symbol. Okay, and for, um, for the rest of the talk to use in the, in the rest of the talk, uh, sorry, I just, just wanted to state that correctness um, says, of course, if we compose these two maps, we get the identity map. And um, yeah, for the, for the rest of the talk, we make this definition. Quantum mechanics is linear, so these, um, these encryption and decryption maps are linear maps, so we just take um, the expectation over all the keys of the encryption map. Uh, and this is, a, this is a, a valid quantum channel again. We make a similar definition for, for, the, for the decryption map. Okay, now let's, let's go back to the setup. So this is, this is the setup that I showed you for, for, classical, uh, for the classical non-malleability. We have Alice that wants to send a map message, and uh, Bob, want, that is the receiver of the message, and then in the middle sits Mallory, the active advers adversary that wants to um, wants to make, implement a certain change on uh, on the plain text. Um, now, in the quantum case, we have to add a, a reference register here, and that is because um, basically because of the no cloning theorem, we have have to replace. Uh, this whole copying procedure by some by something, and and w we replace it by uh, adding a, r a register here, which basically contains all the information that uh, all, all the objects say that A contains information about that that, that the message contains information about. Um, then also we uh, we will basically make a, a definition in the spirit of semantic security. So we allow Mallory to possess some initial side information. About the um, about the message, and this is this register B here. Okay, so now um, for to formalize uh, non malleability we make we define the effective map now. So the effective map is just uh, the composition of encryption, the attack map, and the de the decryption. So basically, the whole the whole um, uh, protocol here. Um, and then taking the, uh, we take the expectation over the key. So this is basically the map that Mallory expects to uh, apply to the plain text space and her side information register. Okay, so now I think we, we, we're ready to, uh, to have a look at the new definition. So the idea is to define non-malleability such that Mallory cannot increase her correlations with the honest parties. So remember that in, in, in the beginning, I t gave you this intuition that non-malleability means that any change on the ciphertext space means uh, will, will at best implement a random change on the plain text. 
So such, a, such an um, interference cannot be used to build up correlations between uh, Mallory and, um, and the honest parties. But there's, of course, one thing that Mallory always can do, and that's um, she can either let the message through or she can destroy it, basically. And um, she can also do this probabilistically. For example, she can flip the coin, record the outcome, and then, uh, depending on the, out on, the, on the outcome, either discard the plain text or let it through. So this gives her an opportunity to slightly increase her, her correlations with the honest parties. So um, our goal is to define non malleability such that only this unavoidable attack is possible, basically. And that's what we, we did. So uh, let's have a look at this definition. So down here we have the, we have the setup again. So now I'm, I drew these dashed lines. So we start out with some quantum state rho on these three register, and we have some final quantum state sigma. So what we would like to say is that um, the quantum mutual information between uh, Mallory's side information here and the honest parties does not increase under the protocol. But we already saw that this is impossible. So we have to add a, a small term to this, which is basically, it's a binary entropy term, and it accounts for this unavoidable attack here. So this is, a, this is the binary entropy term of some probability. The probability is given down here, but the, the actual definition is not so important. Let me just say what it means. It's just a way to, um, yeah, it's, it's basically, intuitively, it's the probability that this attack map lambda acts as the identity on the ciphertext space here, when the in input uh, on, the, on the side information is rho. Okay, so this is, um, this is nice, and, 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 and it, it's an entropic characterization, and if you um, sit down with a piece of paper, and then you can like, quickly write down a particular choice of side information register, uh, um, reference register, and attack map, such as to recover the definition of Hanaoka et al., in, um, in the classical case. But then also we can give a, a definition that's more, that gives more practical security guarantee, uh, like an equivalent characterization of our definition. So, and this looks like uh, as follows. So uh, we can prove that a scheme is uh, non quantum non-malleable if and only if the effective map resulting from such a, a scheme for, a map, for an attack map lambda has this form here. So this is a combination of the identity and uh, a replacement map. And this replacement map, it just discards the plain text and replaces it by the decryption of a random ciphertext with a random key. And these are, of course, paired up with some maps on the side information that, that, uh, that Mallory always can implement. Okay, so um, this is a good point to, to compare this, uh, this definition with the previously existing definition. This was given by Ambinus, Bauda, and Winter in, in 2009. And um, let's first look at the setup. So they, they include a reference register here. Uh, this is basically, yeah, because this, uh, this is what one definitely needs to do in the quantum case, but they don't allow uh, initial side information for, for the adversary. And what is maybe even more important, um, they, uh, is, 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 a, is another difference. So their definition is also in, in the simulation paradigm. So they, they just say that um, um, the effective map will always look, look like this. It, it's a bit similar as, as our definition, but um, in, it, instead of having this very particular replacement map where um, the input is replaced by uh, the a random decryption, a random ciphertext decrypted with a random key, um, they replace it by, um, yeah, the, all replacement maps uh, that are random decryptions, uh, decryptions with a random key are allowed. So basically, the adversary can pick a ciphertext and then have it decrypted with a random key. Um, this doesn't look so bad, but actually, uh, there is a separation between these two uh, definitions. So we have a scheme, a separation scheme, that shows that basically uh, that is secure according to this ABW non-malleability and is insecure according to um, 
our definition, and it allows the adversary to basically choose the output of the decryption function. So basically, uh, yeah, the, the adversary can send any message to, to, to Bob. Um, this doesn't seem so bad if you think of the public key uh, uh, setting, because there this is always possible, but in the private key setting this is somehow unnecessary. As, so one can give uh, a definition that prevents it, and that's, um, that's what, we, what we did. Okay, so let me give some more properties of the definition. So, um, in the case where the encryption map uh, for any given k is unitary, we can prove that um, our definition of non malleability is equivalent to the fact that the set of encryption maps, the uh, encryption unitaries, is a unitary two design. And this is also equivalent, this is, uh, has already been shown by um, Bynes et al. That, that this is uh, equivalent to their, to their definition as well. So, in the case of unitary encryption maps, uh, the two definitions of quantum non malleability are equivalent. However, there are interesting uh, uh, settings where, where, where non unitary encryption schemes are important, and that's, for example, um, for authentication. If, if one wants an authenticating scheme, then this can never be unitary. It needs to have a, a cipher text space that's larger than the, than the plain text space. Okay, so one more um, property that I already mentioned is that this definition of quantum non malleability it implies information theoretic indistinguishability. This is um, somehow contrary to the classical setting where uh, non malleability and um, indistinguishability are completely independent uh, properties. Um, but it's analogous to the uh, setting of, of quantum authentication where this uh, has already been shown. A long time ago, and also what I what I w want to talk about in the in the last part of the talk uh, is the fact that um, one can build authentication schemes from any uh, scheme that is non malleable according to 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 the new definition. Okay, this is just a visual summary of uh, what I told you so far, basically, and uh, let us move on to authentication now. So, just a reminder what, what authentication means. So, if, I, if this guy, the notebook ordering guy, encrypts, encrypts his messages with an authenticating scheme, then any change, any change uh, by the adversary will, will be detected. So, basically, if the adversary changes the message, then the decryption function will output a reject message or an error message. In the quantum setting, Authentication has uh, been first studied in 2002 by Barnum et al. Um, the most, uh, most used definition was given by Dupuis, Nielsen, and Salvay, but um, last year um, there was given a new definition by uh, Gary, Ewan, and Jandry, which will be uh, featured in the next talk. And uh, this definition is stronger. It, it provides uh, security guarantees with high probability over the key and uh, allows for key recycling. And this definition looks like this. Um, it looks a bit frightening, so I will not explain, explain it in detail now, but um, basically the, the spirit of it is that um, it gives, a, yeah, it, 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 it uh, secures that the expected distance between the simula simulator and the, um, and the actual, uh, Protocol is small, so it gives a guarantee that um, that uh, that the security property holds with high probability over the key. Okay, so um, in the in in the original paper, um, this definition was shown to be achievable using unitary eight designs. Um, and what what, what we uh, did is we took uh, the scheme and replaced the eight design by a two design. And using a different analysis, we could show that it is also secure if, if, if for the case of two designs. And this, this fact what was independently proven by Portman. And the advantage is, of course, that two designs um, require much shorter keys. And uh, there are very nice constructions, like, for example, the Clifford group 
or uh, there, there are also derived constructions uh, from, the, from the Clifford group. Okay, um, it seems like I have time to quickly give you an idea about the proof of this fact. Um, so the first observation is that um, one can uh, basically, as, as basically as in the classical case, uh, randomized strategies are, don't help. So basically one can restrict to pure quantum states as initial states and isometries as attack maps. Um, and so if we have an attack isometry, this is just a matrix basically from um, on these bases, then, then, um, then we define a simulator here by just taking the, the, the trace over the C space. So we have a tensor product space, but we only take the trace over the first factor. And this simulator was, uh, the same simulator was used in the, t in, the, uh, in the original paper, and it was first introduced by Broadbent and Wainwright, also in 2016. And so basically what we want to do is we want to bound the difference between what actually happens and the simulator. Uh, and this is uh, in the two norm here. Um, so, so the strategy now is, because this is a two design, this comes from a two design here, we can replace this expression by an integration over the Haar measure and uh, use Schur's lemma for the representation of the unitary group given by the double tensor product to, um, to, to bound this difference here. Okay, so um, let me, so the last part is about how to build um, authentication from a non-malleable scheme. So basically now, instead of just sending the plain message, this guy here thinks he's smart and uh, says, okay, I will tell the bank in advance, I will attach like a string of zeros in the end of my message and now encrypt this with a non-malleable scheme. Now, if an adversary changes this, we know that this will result at best in a random change of the message. So a random change will with high probability uh, change this last line here from not from, from being all zero string to something else. So the only thing the decryption function has to do is check is this the all, all zero string and if no, it will just reject. So this is how basically uh, this, this kind, this notion of non malleability can be used to uh, produce an authenticating scheme. And the last result is uh, that, I, that I want to present is that exactly this works in the quantum case. So basically if we um, define a new scheme by, by, taking, by uh, taking a smaller message space, embedding it in the bigger message space, so basically taking a message and appending like a constant tag to it and encrypt it with a non-malleable scheme. And then the decryption function is, is defined exactly as shown in the last picture. Um, just decrypt the non-malleable scheme and then check whether the tag is intact. Then this provides um, quantum authentication according to, to the definition by Dupuis, Nielsen, and Survey. Okay, so, um, this was the, the, the last slide, basically. Here is a, a quick summary of our results about authentication. We showed that um, this standard notion of authentication can be obtained from, from a quantum non-malleable scheme, and uh, the stronger notion can be uh, obtained with two designs. So I want to finish with a few open questions. So, um, of course, now the question is, what about computational security? and, um, and uh, chosen, chosen plain text, chosen ciphertext security and so on. So um, there, uh, there's some ongoing work with, with Gorian Alekic, my co-author on this um, paper, and Tommaso Gagliardoni. Also, the question is, can we give some security guarantee with high probability for, for non-malleability? Non because right now we always talk about the, um, the average over the key, so this is somehow uh, uh, it would be better if, if we could give a, uh, a guarantee with high probability. And then also, like some minor point is, I, I would like to beautify the, the dependency on, on, the, on the attack map because this, this, uh, this quantity P equal is like kind of tower counterintuitive, so it would be good if, if we could remove it. Okay, so with this, uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you for listening. <laughs>